okay, I can start now. Today's video is going to be a super chill video. Um, just hanging out with me. I'm sitting here drinking a cup of coffee on the floor because you know that's what normal people do, right? Anyway. And I, I just thought that we could talk about maybe 10 things that make cleaning easier or more bearable. Tips, uh, tricks, whatever I've been learning along the way because I hate cleaning more than anything. I do it for a living. I hate it. I hate coming home and cleaning. I, I'm burnt out on it. So sometimes I need that push. I need that nudge. I try to think of ways to get myself off of my butt and get some stuff done. So let's jump right into it. I wrote the 10 things down in my handy dandy notebook because if I didn't, I wouldn't know what I was talking about and it would be a mess. So I apologize for reading and keep looking down, but I have to write things down. Okay. Number one thing, which to me is like everything, make your bed when you first get up in the morning. And I know sometimes it's hard to make your bed when you first get up if you have a spouse that sleeps later than you or whatever. I have that problem on the weekends. But when he gets up, I always try to go up there and make the bed. Not only does making the bed set the whole vibe of the room, but it's the focal point of the bedroom when you walk in there. I mean, if the bed's made and there's stuff on the floor, I don't know, it just it feels like the room isn't as messy and as unkept if the bed is made. The reason it makes you feel better too when your bed's made. I personally feel like I have my whole entire life together when my bed is made. And also, when your bed is made, it just kind of puts you in the mood of you want to keep up with the rest of the room because the bed is made. You know? Hold on. Okay, enough about bed making. Just make your bed, guys. It takes like two seconds and you will feel better. I promise. Every time you go in that bedroom for something that bed's made, you're going to feel like you got your life together. I promise. Okay, number two. Buy the cute scrub brushes, the cute little rubber gloves with the flowers on them. Buy the fragrant scented Mrs. Myers cleaning supplies. Buy the pink broom and the pink dustpan. Buy stuff that makes you excited about cleaning instead of the same old boring bleach smell. No offense on bleach, I like bleach, and if you're a bleach lover, then thumbs up. Me personally, I'm sick of cleaning with it, so I always try to change my cleaning products up. Um, because I clean for a living, I'm always buying cleaning stuff. So instead of always buying the same stuff, um, every time I go to the store, I buy something different just to spice it up and make it less boring for me and you know, I buy the cute little scrub brushes with the pink flowers or whatever it is just to get more excited about cleaning because face it guys, cleaning isn't that exciting. It's pretty boring. So sometimes you gotta spice things up. Spend the extra 25 cents to get the cute little freaking scrub brush or whatever it is. Point number three. Try to have the house picked up before you go to actually clean it. And when I say clean it, I mean like dusting and vacuuming. And the reason for that is I find that it's really overwhelming when you're cleaning. If you go into the room, not only do you have to vacuum, mop, dust, and all that, but before you can even do any of those things, you have to pick stuff off the floor, you have to go put dishes away, you have to, you know, and it's easy to get sidetracked. Anyway, oh, that's my, my next point, I believe. But anyway, um, it makes it less overwhelming if you've already got everything picked up off the floor and the only thing you need to do when you go in that room is dust it and vacuum it. You can get out of there quicker 
and it's less overwhelming. Trust me. Have the house picked up before you start cleaning. I mean, I know that's not always possible, but it just seems to help. Okay. Hold on. Coffee break. My fourth thing is do something to get your mind off of cleaning while you're cleaning. I'm the kind of person that if I don't have, me personally, I have to have music on when I'm cleaning in my earphones. Um, it gets my mind off of it. I find that I clean faster and it doesn't really feel like I'm cleaning because I'm like singing and dancing the whole time I'm cleaning. Um, you know, if you're not that kind of person, you could listen to a podcast. You could turn the TV on and have that playing for some kind of noise. Now, if I put the TV on, I would not get any cleaning done because I would be too busy, too busy watching whatever was on the TV. So you have to do like whatever works for you. But really what works for me is Spotify, guys. It's my best friend. I listen to it at work, at people's houses. I listen to it at people's offices. I listen to it when I'm cleaning my own house. So do something to get your mind off of it so you're not like, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. I'm never going to get this done. Because, yeah. Hold on. Okay, tip number five. Switch up your routine. Like if you normally start in one area of the house. Sorry, this Christmas tree is poking me in the back. Stop! Jeez. Um, sorry. Switch your routine up. If you normally start in one area of the house, like if you normally start with the upstairs, start with the downstairs. Or if you normally start in the kitchen, go start in the bedrooms. Just switching it up can make it seem less monotonous. And I do this at my jobs. It just changed it up for me and I don't know. It helps me switch it up. Okay. Thing number six, make it a game. I mean, not really a game, but like time yourself if you have to. I mean, I think those power hours, whoever invented those, those are awesome. Or, you know, if that's just like too much, just set a timer for like watching TV and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to get up. I've got so much to do today. And you can't find the motivation to do any of it. Get up off the couch set the timer for whatever. It could even just be 15 minutes and do 15 minutes worth of work because you know what? That 15 minutes is better than nothing. And when the timer goes off, you're going to be like, oh, I actually got quite a lot done in 15 minutes. And you know what? Sometimes that's all you need. And then you're already motivated and you'll keep on cleaning. And if you don't keep on cleaning, guess what? And you sit back on the couch, that's 15 minutes of stuff that you didn't get done. So making it a game, sometimes it just challenges you to work faster and it also challenges you to get it done. You got that timer ticking. Okay, thing number seven. Make a list of the things that you would like to accomplish that day. Write them down. You know, I don't know about you, I mean, I'm not a huge list person, but the few times I have made the list, it felt really good to be able to put that line right through it, or if you're not a line person, put the check next to it like it's done, been there, done that. I don't know, it's just a good feeling. Um, it feels like you got something accomplished, and to have it on writing, you know, you're like, okay, these are the things I actually got done today. Instead of trying to remember or someone's like, oh, all you did was lay around on the couch all day. You're so lazy. You can pull out your little notebook and be like, nope, I did this, 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 and this. And you got some proof. Because I know how men are. They like to say that we're lazy and we don't do anything. Keep a list. It'll help. But let me add to that. Don't make your list so overbearing that you can't get it done. Don't set too high expectations to where you have like 50 things on your list and you're only going to get to 10 of them and you're stressing about the other 40. Don't do that. Make it a small list of things that you're going to do anyway. Throw a load of laundry in. Empty dishwasher. 
take the trash out. Just simple things, you know. On to number eight. We're almost done. Start with your smaller rooms first when you're cleaning a big house. And maybe not even when you're cleaning a big house, just you're cleaning in general. I use this method at my jobs and I also use it at home. If I know that I have to tackle this whole house and I start with a major project first, let's say the kitchen or the other living room, which is always a mess, or my daughter's room, I'm going to be in there for a long period of time and I'm going to feel like I've gotten nowhere. But I've noticed if I start with smaller areas of the house, like let's say the downstairs bathroom, that's quick and easy to get through. This living room, quick and easy to get through. Dust, vacuum, I am out of here. Um, you know, my daughter's bathroom. You know, start with small jobs first. And that way, you feel like you're getting somewhere. You know, you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't, it, it's been like two hours and I'm still in one room. I'm never going to get anything done. Because that can be very overwhelming and that can be very discouraging too. So I'm telling you, start with small rooms or small tasks that you know you can get done. And save the bigger task for last. Number not. My finger don't want to come up. Oh, good Lord. Number nine. Number nine. If you're anything like me, let's hope you're not, I get easily distracted. Like, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty bad. What I mean is, like, let's say I'm up in the bedroom cleaning it. I'm in a zone. I'm getting this bedroom clean. And there's a dirty cup or whatever, and it needs to come downstairs and go in the sink. Instead of setting it to the side, I decide to walk it all the way downstairs and put it in the sink. Well, while I'm down here, I see that the sink is full of dishes, so I might as well just go ahead and put those in the dishwasher. And then I open the dishwasher and it's full. So I have to empty the dishwasher to put those dishes in there. So then I'm doing that, and while I'm doing that, I realize the dish towel is dirty. It needs to go in the washer. So I walk it into the laundry room and while I'm in there, I see the laundry is done and it needs to be changed over. So I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm already in here. I might as well do it. So, and I completely forget about what I was originally doing, which was what? The bedroom. I wasn't doing the kitchen. I wasn't doing laundry. I was cleaning the bedroom. But because I took the cup and walked it all the way downstairs, I saw everything else that needed to be done and I started going 50 million different directions. Here's some advice. If you're working in the bedroom, you got a dirty cup, set it at the top of the stairs and tell yourself, when I go downstairs, I will take this cup. Let me go back in the bedroom and finish what I started. Voila! Problem solved. I do this all the time and I never get anything done because when you're going from room to room to room and you're doing all these little things, you can't actually say, okay, I got the bedroom done or I got the whole kitchen done or I got the whole laundry room done. No, you didn't. All you did was empty the dishwasher in the kitchen. All you did was switch the laundry over in the laundry room and all you did in the bedroom was make the bed and start to dust but then you saw that cup and you walked downstairs and poof, there went the bedroom okay. because you're so scatterbrained. So my advice is if you're in a room, stay in that room so you can say you got the room done and move on. Number 10, last but not least, don't put so much pressure on yourself to have to get everything done and be superwoman. Your house doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to not be that perfect person. Let your kids have fun playing games, making memories. Heck, put the broom down. Sit down and play with them. I guarantee when they get older, you don't want to be remembered as, well, my mom always had a clean house, but she never had time to play with me. 
Your kids don't care if you dusted your fireplace today. They don't. What they care about is if you made time for them. What they care about is if you listen to them. What they care about is if you actually look them in the eyes and stopped what you were doing, put the phone down, put the broom down, shut the laptop, whatever it is, and gave them your undivided attention. That's what they're going to remember. My mom listened to me when I talked to her. And they're going to come back to you and they're going to feel like they can actually talk to you and that you're not too busy for them. And I know it's really hard to do because we all have busy lives and sometimes we put our kids on the back burner because we're so rushed through everything and we feel like everything has to be done. But you know what? Those dishes, they can wait. Your child can't wait. You know why? Your child's not going to be young forever. They're not. And yes, I'm not telling you not to do your dishes because that would just be disgusting. What I'm saying is don't push yourself so hard that you forget that you have a family that loves you and also wants your love and wants your attention. And don't forget to take some time in there for yourself. Self-love is everything. So important to get a grasp on that. Just remember what's important in life and also don't forget to make some time for yourself. And in that, I'm going to close. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's something a little bit different, but I just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys while I was drinking my coffee. And I hope that maybe these tips will help you um, when you're cleaning and you feel like you're getting overwhelmed or it just gets so monotonous and you're like, oh my God, I just, I don't want to clean. Honey, that's me every day. So I feel you. I do. I hate it. But until they invent robots or self-cleaning houses, I think we're going to be stuck with cleaning for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And by the way, um, I'm not sure when this video is going to be posted because right now I have been uploading a lot of vacation videos. But currently, at this moment, when I, I am over 200 subscribers. And I just wanted to take a quick minute and say thank you to all you guys who are subscribed. Thank you so much for your support and for watching my videos and being so kind and being so sweet. It really means a lot to me. And I will see you guys on my next one. Mm-hmm.